Good evening, Kenton community. My name is Sabatino Sumato, and I am your superintendent of schools, and this is your weekly update. First and foremost, let me begin. Um, I want to apologize. I'm actually recording this uh, weekly update on Thursday evening. So there may be some announcements on Friday that occur uh, that are not included in this weekly update, and we'll make sure to include them uh, next Friday to update the community on anything that may happen uh, actually today, Friday, for those of you who are watching on Friday. So this week, I'm going to break the connection and the update into um, some really salient points. First, I wanna talk about uh, back to school planning that has occurred and some information for parents. I wanna talk a little bit about remote learning and what we can expect, what we've been doing, and uh, how teachers and our staff are really uh, coming along and as we continue to grow as a district. Um, I also wanna talk about our training uh, that has occurred this week and will continue to occur uh, this school year as we continue in our new, um, our new and improved remote environment. I wanna spend a little time talking about technology and I wanna round us off for today on speaking about food service and athletics. So first, let's take that first point, the back to school planning. And um, I, I just want to reiterate um, for parents, thank you very much to our families that have been very patient, um, that have given us a lot of feedback during our planning. And we'll continue with that feedback process and procedure. I want you to really, folks, really look for the information that individual schools are sending out this week. And all of our back to school information can be found on our website, www.ktufsd.org forward slash back to school. Everything from welcome letters and lists and uh, school remote learning plans, device distribution, our back to school FAQ, all of that can be found. Also, teachers and schools are sharing Google Classroom codes, which can be found through uh, Clever. But a big portion that uh, you're not gonna see there yet, but I wanted to make sure I announced today, is that we will have a future, I promised last week, and I wanna continue to reiterate, a future parent um, question and answer session. And that will be coming up in a, in a few weeks. During the week of September 21st, so next week, we'll actually have a, an, a, a, a very specific date and time that you'll be able to log on for another question and answer session like we've held previously. I also wanna talk about um, transportation and in this planning of what you can expect. So right now we have um, that we'll begin on Tuesday with some transportation for eligible students in our non-public schools and also our out of district um, special education student sites as well as our students, our CTE, career technical education students that attend some of our BOCI sites. Uh, CTE students will actually begin next week being picked up at their bus stops and taken to the BOCI sites as part of their programming. We've spoken about that in, in previous updates. I'll refer you to those previous updates to really get more in depth um, in the CTE programming. And if you have any questions, especially in our high schools, don't hesitate to reach out to your actual school sites. So that's the planning that has been going on. Uh, we know where we are. Um, with uh, that planning up to this point. And, and uh, now let's really talk about that remote learning and the planning that has gone into remote learning. Our objective with remote learning, folks, is much different this fall than it was this past spring. You've heard me say it before. Our spring remote planning was thrust upon us it was everyone was in survival mode. Our families, our students, our teaching staff, our administrators, our support staff, we were all looking to get the most for students that we could get being thrown into the situation that we were. But so much planning has gone into where we're going to be right now for the fall. Now, let there be no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, we will be in a much different place October 8th than we are September 8th. And we absolutely should hold ourselves accountable for being in a much different place November 8th 
than we are October 8th. So what I mean by saying that is that we should continue to grow. We have to have this growth mindset that we're going to continue to get better and better and better as time goes on. Now our teachers have been working extremely hard in making sure that they're ready for the beginning of school. Our administrators have been working very hard. But let's talk about that beginning of school. You're going to see teachers really spending some time in the first few days of learning, uh, getting to know students, getting students more familiar with the procedures in this virtual environment getting uh, students and families acquainted with the scheduling. And let there be no mistake, our teachers are becoming more familiar with it as they go. And folks, the learning will be in the doing. So you'll see that our teachers will get even better uh, from week to week, uh, even day to day, as they're rolling out the procedures to students. And I'm gonna really uh, ask you for your patience in that. Our, our teachers are working very hard, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so are our administrators with making sure that uh, they're delivering the best that they possibly can to students and families. Um, but we are going to hold that higher level of rigor now in the fall than we even had in the springtime. So, and, and be patient with, uh, teachers will, will also be patient with families and with students, and they'll be flexible in their, in their grading and their teaching practices, but we'll continue to develop those as we go. The key is we're going to have to continue the training for our teachers, just like the teachers are gonna continue the training for the students. So as we progress through this fall, that's kind of the expectation, that growth mindset. We've been sharing that with our teachers. Our teachers are very anxious to get to be with their kids again. And we're gonna ask for the, the patience of our families as our teachers bring our students along in that mindset. So. Um, during That brings us to where we've been this past week. Our teachers and our administrators and our support staff have really been working hard in a, a lot of different training. We have wonderful teacher leaders, administrator leaders that have really been working on training topics. They've focused on Google Classroom and Canvas. They've looked at engagement and learning tools. They've looked at how to really meet the needs and begin to meet the needs of our, of our students and families, the social emotional learning and support, and also the, those remote teaching and learning strategies, what works best in a digital environment. This professional development is creating this foundation for our teachers and for our administrators. So the, I really wanna commend all of our staff on the excellent work and how the training is continuing and how we're, our, our work on our remote lesson needs to continue. And folks, that really brings us to this, this uh, final part that I wanna discuss and that's where we're going in the future. So we really understand that we are in a remote environment. Even when we come back in the hybrid mode, and you know, you can see right now, you should see on your screen that, um, that one slide depiction of where we're going over the next several months and how we're phasing uh, in-person learning back with our families and students. And, and please understand, when we're doing that, our teachers are going to be shifting also simultaneously and we're finding ways of how we can teach in a hybrid model. And that means that in person, while we still have some people remote and our teachers are going to get better with that. Our teachers have been so open, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to really improving their practice and understanding how their practice can continue to grow in this digital environment. So uh, I want to assure you that uh, as a district, as a Canton district, we're really working collaboratively um, with all of our, um, uh, on all of our different angles, our, our support system, our teachers, our administrators, on how we can continue to grow and develop and, and really produce the best lessons that we are able to uh, uh, deliver to our families and our students. So uh, I really wanna commend all of our staff on that. Now. That doesn't happen without technology. And as a district, you've heard me say uh, repeatedly over the last month, the work is to get us to be a one-to-one -one district. One-to-one -one district means one device for every student that we have. Now, we're not quite there yet, but we're putting the pieces in place to get us there this year. 
this year sooner rather than later. So those orders are in and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll see those devices come in more and more. But if you are still struggling, um, there is uh, a way that you can reach out to the district and follow the, the, the phase in of becoming a one-to-one. -one. Please look at our, at our website at www.ktufsd.org forward slash capital T tech forward or uh, and also a capital S support. So once again, that's ktufsd.org forward slash tech support. And this is the link uh, under our reopening tab on our website that will really bring you to getting that assistance that you need with technology if you are in that uh, dire need. Um, to round us off this week, I want to talk a little bit about food service. We had a big announcement from the USDA that food service, we are able to offer um, free meals to everyone through the month of December. So that's a little bit different than what we've announced in our weekly updates in the past. We've heard that usually our only our, our five sites that I've mentioned previously were CEP uh, schools, but now because the USDA made this announcement, all of our sites and all of our children will be able to receive those free meals um, during this first part of school. Um, now, uh, people will say, well, Samato, we're, we're in a remote. Well, the great thing about our food service department is that they've really devoted and dedicated to how they're going to do this and prepare the meals for this Wednesday distribution. Meal kits with preparation and reheating instructions will be offered weekly Wednesdays. The pickup sites are Franklin, Hoover, and Holmes, and we're going to offer them in two different time slots on those days. Every Wednesday, you can pick those up for the week from either 11 to 1 p.m. or 4 to 6 p.m. Now, uh, the reason why we're doing that is that we know that with our working families and with different child care issues that there's going to be uh, different times that fa families will be able to come in uh, and families won't be able to come in. So once again, it's every Wednesday at Franklin Homes and Hoover from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. or 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. And during those times, you'll pick up your, your meals for those five days, that Monday through Friday, with reheating uh, instructions. Um, the final thing that I want to, to really bring us together on is athletics. And athletics, um, since I'm recording this on a Thursday evening, there is supposed to be a, a, an announcement regarding athletics, um, a, a further announcement. We already had our announcement from the governor and um, our uh, New York State Public High Schools Athletic Association will be sharing their recommendations. And our Section 6 is working really hard to establish uh, procedure recommendations for each, uh, each school district. Uh, that um, we can uh, follow. And, and folks, I just want to be clear on this. We will look at all of these recommendations and then we will decide what we can and what we cannot offer based on what is uh, being offered and what our governor is saying, what the recommendations are, and we'll look at guidance from Section 6. But we will also align it to our phase-in model, okay? Um, and we have to look at, of course, safety and security is the number one priority. And we will be announcing that. I hope that by next week, by next Friday, it will be very clear how we're proceeding as a district with athletics. Um, it is our priority to get students back to in-person instruction. It is our priority to get students into meeting their social and emotional needs but our number one priority is safety and security. So we will make sure that anything that we come out with as a district does follow what our priorities are, does align to uh, how we're proceeding as a district, and um, uh, the safety of our students, our staff, and our families will of course be number one, uh, but we do know how important it is to get kids back to uh, any semblance of normalcy uh, sooner rather than later. And that's where I'm going to end with today, folks. A lot of questions have come up with uh, our model. And I just want to be clear. Our model is a skeleton and it's a framework. I want to be clear about our model. Our model is a phase-in approach. Our model has the ability 
to stop and, and slow down. If we see that there are problems, especially with uh, the pandemic out in our society, it also gives us the option to speed things up if things are going even better than where they were when we introduced the model. So I wanna be clear to families. I am not, as your superintendent, I am not against moving forward in a faster pace than what our model dictates at this time. But time, our resources with PPE, our resources as educators, and the fact that we can provide a safe environment for our students and staff and families, um, that will all dictate how we move forward over the next several months. So we have a skeleton in front of us right now. You could probably see that depiction on your screen right now that shows you um, uh, how we'll be fully phased into a hybrid approach. Um, and if things even get even better after our hybrid approach and we're told that we can move into a fully in-person model, then that's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do. That's our goal. Our goal is to have children back in school as soon as we can, making sure that we follow those two priorities, safety of our students, families and staff, and offering the best instructional model. And I really wanna commend our district, our uh, central office administrators, our administrators, our teaching and our uh, other support staff. Everybody has been working so collaboratively to make sure that we continue to move this needle in the right direction towards achieving our ultimate goal. Additionally, Kenton families, we know the difficult situation that all of our families are placed in with us starting the year in remote, and they'll even be placed in once we start to phase in the hybrid with students being home during the school day. Uh, with that being said, we know that uh, today for me on Thursday, but since you're watching this on Friday, yesterday afternoon, Thursday afternoon, we had an exciting announcement from Erie County um, Executive uh, Mark Polencars. Uh, the county executive is releasing a grant that school districts, families, and service providers can apply for to get assistance with child care during the school day. Now, I don't know much more than that at this point, but I do know it's an exciting opportunity for our families to get some much needed assistance um, throughout this pandemic and the challenges that they're facing. I will give a further update next week in our update, but please stay tuned as this was a very important announcement for all of our Kenton families. Remember folks, we are Kenton strong, we are Kenton proud, and together we will move Kenton forward. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you families for your patience. And let's have a great opening week this week. Um, kiddos, I know that this isn't the opening week that you would hope for, but trust me, our teaching staff is going to make this the best experience that it could possibly be. Thank you again, teachers and administrators and support staff for everything that you're doing this week, next week. And I know that we're gonna take the right amount of time to get to know our students and start this year correctly. Thank you, folks, and have a great weekend.